Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and welcome to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate all the comments I've been getting on my videos. I enjoy making these videos and I really appreciate your support. I'm still learning how to edit and manage the technical side of things, but I'm always open to new topic suggestions if there's anything you'd like me to talk about. I have many more videos planned, but not enough time to make them as fast as I wish I could. And thank you little B on Twitter for making a thread to keep track of this influencer. I will be mentioning topics that are sensitive and relate to child endangerment and CSA. This video is meant for a mature audience only. Today we are going to talk about Rebecca, or Becca Martinez, a former TV show contestant, how she's come to the public eye, and what keeps her in it today. This is going to be a long one, so brace yourselves. Becca Martinez was born in February of 1995 in California. She first came to the public eye when she was a contestant on the 14th season of The Bachelor. Oh, nice! What is going on? Stop it. Oh, it's a cool car. No. I love it. <laughs> oh, that bitch. Who the hell can pull that off? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Becca. Her first controversy happened in 2018 when she allegedly went missing. Becca went to do an interview on Jimmy Kimmel Live and spoke about the situation. Please say hello to Becca M. Hello, Becca M. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Why were you on the missing persons list in Humboldt County? All right, let me set the record straight. First of all, yes. a lot of people thought I lied to my mother saying that I was on a farm uh, when I was actually on The Bachelor. But no, I had oh. already been eliminated from the show. Uh -huh. And I just decided to go up to the mountains with some friends for a couple of weeks. And I was there for six or seven days without phone service, which I thought I was going to have phone service. And I told my mother that I would. And, you know, I just had this weird feeling on like the sixth or seventh day, I was like, I need to go home now. So I got in my car, drove to where I had service, called my parents, and then, yeah, come to find out, only 12 hours before, my mother had called the Humboldt Sheriff's Department saying that uh, I was missing. So you were so. not on a farm. You were in the mountains. Is that what that was? Was that a farm I was on? I'm That's not. what the sheriff's <laughs> department said. You were on a mar Oh, you were on a marijuana farm. Well, <laughs> it's Humboldt County, so. I see. But no, so but no, every, I'm not, every open field straight. is a marijuana farm, is what you're saying. <laughs> to set the record straight, I'm not a weed farmer. I am still a nanny in LA, but I yes, see. my friends have a weed farm. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're. <laughs> Yeah, when you're watching kids, you don't want to be known as the weed farmer. That's. <laughs> I found an article written by Bustle about this incident, and I'm going to read the part talking about Becca's explanations in her Instagram stories because there was a shocking detail I was not expecting. The article says, As Martinez explained via a series of posts to her Instagram story, she was broke after her time on the show, and she had to quit her nanny job to be a contestant. Quote, I needed to make some quick cash, so I went with a friend to work on a farm trimming for a couple of weeks, she wrote. Driving on the dark roads of Humboldt County, she continued, she hit a bear that darted into the road. It was okay and ran off into the forest, though. <coughs> um, he ran off into the forest is all you have to say, how huh, Becky? We will never forget what you did that night. Becca was criticized for her posts from 2015, specifically this one, where she combines the words Trap Queen and Shakajawea to call herself Trapajawea. She addressed this post in her Instagram stories and said, In the past, I unfortunately and ignorantly thought these kinds of captions were funny or witty. They're not. It's a weird mix of appropriation and stereotyping, and it's not cool. I'm really sorry I ever posted this kind of stuff. And I'm sorry I didn't notice in order to delete sooner. I know it's disappointing. She also went on a rant about how growing up in a strict religious environment was what influenced her to do and say the hateful things that she has. Oh, I just have to get this off my chest and then I'm getting off Instagram for the day. <sighs> I've really been thinking a lot about this. To have never been problematic 
to have never said or done anything problematic, well, one, that's probably a lie, but two, that's a privilege, whether you realize that or not. To have grown up in a community that's always taught you what's right, what's progressive, that is a huge privilege. I was raised pretty much homeschooled or in a Christian conservative private school until I was about 14, 15. Even then, after that, my public school education was in a very conservative, right-wing, um, Western Christianity community uh, and family. And a lot of people in the country were raised like this. I was taught since a very young age that being gay, um, you would go to hell if you were gay. I was taught that Islam was one of the most dangerous things in the world. Um, even to this day, I actually don't know much about science, about like the origin of the world, because I was taught um, creationism throughout my whole upbringing. I was taught that the whole all lives matter thing. I didn't have access to any other information. You know, me and I remember me and one of my and my one of my Asian friends as a child, we thought it was okay to call her Ching Chong. We didn't know any better. We literally didn't know any better. I didn't have access to any other information in my first 18 years of life, virtually. I'm not saying this like, oh, feel bad for me. Not at all. A lot of people have a similar upbringing. I'm just, this is sort of a message for the younger generation who has a wealth of information and education at their fingertips, which I think is wonderful. I think my point is just, Everyone has done something problematic or will do something problematic. And it's not about avoiding that at all costs. It's about how you address it. And just in my opinion, with what I've thought through, just with any mistake, whenever you've wronged someone, I think that what you have to do is admit you've done something wrong. You know, take accountability when others hold you accountable. Explain why what you did was wrong. Um, educate yourself and if applicable to people around you and then do something tangible to make it right you know donate volunteer make a specific commitment um that's the only antidote that i can think in 2021 becca joined and pulled out of a giveaway of a hawaii vacation the giveaway was a collaboration between a few different creators including a familiar face and was held in the middle of the pandemic Becca got a comment telling her that Native Hawaiians don't want visitors during a pandemic, and Becca replied, Thank you so much for this comment. I'm just seeing this and I'm reading now. I'm going to remove myself from the giveaway and will be learning more and attempting to make this right. It seems like Becca realized this was wrong and was quick to act to fix her mistakes, unlike other creators who were also participating in this giveaway, and she edited the caption of her post announcing it, to say that it was ignorant of her to participate in it in the first place and that she's going to take her time to learn about why traveling to Hawaii during a global health crisis is dangerous for the native people of the island. Hopefully she learned why traveling anywhere back then was a bad idea. All this shows Becca is taking some responsibility, but there's still posts she hasn't ever addressed like this one, where she's made ableist comments comparing her boyfriend Grayson Leonard to a disabled person using a bigoted slur, which seems to have gone by unnoticed. Currently, Becca is a co-host on a podcast called Chatty Broads and owns a clothing company. Her bio states she makes her mistakes publicly, and that's an understatement. In her podcast, Becca discusses having intercourse with her partner while their newborn baby is breastfeeding and physically attached to her. Like, I no, felt uncomfortable, yeah. even if she was in a safe place, like, even with a monitor, I was, like, I had this, like, primal, is primal the right word? Maybe not. I think so. I had this sense that I needed her close to me at all times, mm -hmm. and if, and I really could not get out of my head otherwise if we yeah. were having sex. I just, uh, my head would start, what, what is she doing? Like, what's, is something going to happen? Like, is she upset? Does she need me? I feel guilty because I'm putting myself before her right now. And I needed her in the room with me the first two months. I sure, really did. Yeah. And some, and I think we talked about on the podcast, the first time that we had sex, she was literally nursing on my boob while we were having sex. And you know what? It, it ended up being a great experience. When these clips resurfaced in July of 2021, Becca defended herself in her Instagram stories and said, When my daughter was a newborn over two years ago, I couldn't put her down without her crying. 
She nursed all day and all night. She wouldn't nap or sleep in a bassinet. I had awful postpartum blues and very little help after my mom left. I'm shaking with tears in my eyes as I write this. I would never, ever, ever do anything to hurt my children in that way. I love my babies so much. Having someone harm them sexually is one of my biggest fears and most common intrusive thoughts. For people to suggest that I was trying to do that to my newborn is absolutely devastating. I was trying to survive. I was trying to be a good mom. I was trying to keep my baby happy at all times. I was trying to maintain a relationship with my partner that was already rocky. I was not sick, twisted, or perverted. This is very different from what she initially said in the podcast, where her main focus was her own comfort, and there is no mention of her baby needing to nurse at all times. Like, I no, felt uncomfortable, yeah. even if she was in a safe place, like, even with a monitor, I was like, I needed her close to me at all times, mm -hmm. and I needed her in the room with me the first two months. I sure, really did. Yeah. It, it ended up being a great experience. Not being able to ask your partner for help when you're struggling, or being pressured into having sex in order to keep your relationship going, are signs of an unhealthy relationship. Becca's boyfriend, Grayston, should definitely be criticized for ignoring Becca's struggles and pressuring her to serve his own needs to the point of involving a newborn baby in a sexual act. He is just as responsible as Becca. She tries to argue that this is not true because breastfeeding isn't sexual, and it isn't. But having sex is sexual, and the child being physically attached to you during it involuntarily involves the child in it, even if there is nothing sexual happening to them. Becca's intentions are clearly not to hurt her kids, but she's still inadvertently doing it by exposing them to things that they're not developmentally ready for. Like when she let her one-year-old daughter teeth on a vibrator. Becca says that this is not a big deal because the vibrator was old, clean, and sanitized. On her Instagram story, she addressed the haters and said, Acting like I abused my child with a sex toy or committed some sort of malicious, trauma-inducing act by laughing about it on my podcast for real? She dismisses concerns about how this is going to affect her daughter once she's older and finds out she was teething on her parents' story. Becca says, Y'all need to grow the F up and quit getting your puritanical panties in a bunch. Puritanical means practicing or affecting strict religious or moral behavior. Becca has talked about her religious upbringing in the past and how it limited her growing up, but she seems to think that not giving a child a vibrator to teeth on is strict moral behavior and not common sense. People who call Becca out for allowing her baby to put a used toy in her mouth and including breastfeeding her in a sexual act are not being puritanical. They are simply pointing out that when a child is exposed to sexual material too young, they aren't developed enough to understand what's going on properly, which can cause trauma once they start processing it. While it's important to not shame sexuality, there have been plenty of studies done that confirm that exposing a child to materials they're not ready for, like sexual or violent imagery, can cause behavioral issues and long-lasting psychological effects. Becca chooses to be ignorant and uses the classic mom-shaming excuse to say, This isn't just about haters. It's about this judgmental ass, I parent better than you attitude that people take on and exhibit to their friends and loved ones, not just random people on the internet. Have some grace for parents who are stumbling along, trying to figure shit out as they go, just like literally every other mom and dad in the history of the world. In our house, female pleasure is something that will be talked about. It's not that big of a effing deal. Get a life. It's interesting Becca's projecting what she's done onto other parents and seems to think that her actions are common. Discussions of sex have to be done according to the child's developmental level and what they are ready for. There's plenty of guidance that people can get on how to talk to children about sexuality in the right way, and in no point does it include letting the child chew a clean but used vibrator. Using parent shaming as an excuse to avoid responsibility when being called out for endangering your child is something that seems to be very common on social media. There's a difference between mom shaming and cautioning a parent against dangerous practices and being worried. There are plenty of people who do not have their own children, either by choice or not, but they're still aware of basic safety practices, and some even may be qualified in child care and development, and often spend their time caring for more children than most people do. I don't know how this excuse can be justified in situations like these, but it doesn't take having kids to know when something bad is happening to them.
An example of when Becca was truly mom-shamed was when she got comments about her choices to continue breastfeeding her toddler after she had her second baby. She was getting comments about how her 18 months old is going to be traumatized while being fed by her mother. These types of comments are judging Becca for her choices to continue to feed her child in a way that they're both comfortable with and is healthy for both the baby and mother. Getting judgment for how you're feeding your child is completely different from getting judgment after saying that you willingly put a newborn in a sexual situation for your own comfort. Like, I, I felt know, uncomfortable, yeah. even if she was in a safe place, that I needed her close to me at all times. Mm -hmm. And I needed her in the room with me the first two months. Ended up being a great experience. Even if the baby won't remember, Becca's willingness to expose her children to sexual topics so young is what concerns her followers the most. Especially after Becca expressed that she thinks about her daughter during masturbation, hoping she will one day experience pleasure like Becca does. And I feel sick even saying this about a baby. Becca also shared that she's been diagnosed with profile OCD a form of OCD that includes intrusive thoughts about pedophilia that cause stress and upset and cause the person suffering to perform compulsions or safety behaviors to alleviate that stress, like avoiding contact with their children. Suffering from POCD doesn't mean a person is sexually attracted to children, but it's clear that Becca is struggling with incorporating sexuality into motherhood and setting healthy boundaries where they are needed. In my opinion, this mindset of seeing any advice as criticism and hate pushes Becca to continue posting about unsafe parenting practices and failures that lead to serious endangerment of life. In June of 2021, Becca posted an Instagram story about how she accidentally locked her children in a blazing hot car and how they were in there long enough to start sweating and visibly shaking. She said, I didn't realize the doors were locked. My keys and phone were in the front seat and the car was blazing hot. My daughter couldn't figure out how to unlock the doors. Luckily, some bystanders let me borrow their phone to call 911. We were getting super nervous because the kids were pouring sweat and my son was visibly shaking. A man was just about to help me break open the back window when the fire department got there and helped pry open a door. It was really scary. Luckily, both were fine. And I'm just still shaken up. It's been a pretty bad day, aside from Gray's LARPing. Fortunately, the fire department arrived on time and unlocked the car, and Becca says that someone was about to help her break the window. Becca was really lucky in this situation, which could have ended up much worse. I'm not really sure what the point of posting about this situation was. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But Becca endangers her kids consciously, even when it's not an accident. She posted an Instagram story of her and her boyfriend Grayston driving in a parking lot while both of their kids are in their laps. Driving through a parking lot while your toddler and infant are in your lap can seem safer than driving with kids in your lap on a highway because the cars around you are parked. But there's always a chance that others will be driving carelessly and hit Becca's car. Her baby who was shown in the second part of the clip is currently around 10 months old. And at this age, he should still be sitting in a rear facing car seat at the back of the car. Besides the physical endangerment of the kids, Becca also sacrifices her kids' privacy and bodily autonomy by regularly posting photos of them naked on her Instagram page, something they're unable to consent to, and only censors their nipples and genitals. I'm not going to show any photos here, and I'm very uncomfortable with the fact I even saw them with my own eyes. I don't know about you, but when I was a cub, I would remove photos that were embarrassing to me from my family album and destroy them. I know it's chaotic, but even being as young as I was, I was able to make the decision that I wanted those photos gone. But kids who are growing up being posted online don't have that option, and they can't consent to having their naked bodies on the internet forever. There are so many reasons posting even fully clothed photos of kids can go wrong, and the well-being, safety, and privacy of the child should always be a top priority when posting them. Of course, parents can choose to do whatever they want to, and not every photo they post online will be used for malicious purposes or have a damaging psychological effect, 
but it's important to at least try and have some foresight and be aware of what could happen. Another instance of carelessness happened just a bit ago when Becca made another public mistake. Becca shared on her Instagram story that just before leaving to celebrate her daughter's birthday, there was a small fire in the family home. We decided that we would burn our house down. We're like, you know what? We don't want to buy that new house. We love our house, so we're going to burn it down. We're going to burn it down. Everything, everything is covered in soot. Like, everything is covered in soot. What the hell? I can't even get into how all this happened, but like, literally everything like all their toys everything is just absolutely covered in soot oh my god I understand that with parasocial relationships, creators can sometimes feel obligated to share many details of their lives with their fans, but I don't understand what the point of sharing this was, other than to get sympathy from her fan base. This seems like something you would discuss with a family member or a close friend, especially since there was no follow-up on fire safety in the home and how to prevent this from happening to others. But Becca did say she makes all her mistakes publicly. I mentioned earlier that Becca and Acacia knew each other, and in June of 2021, a couple of days after Becca was posting that her and her kids have been feeling sick, both of them attended a meetup of influencer mommies together. After this, Becca posted that her kids are feeling sicker than they have all week. Acacia's daughter Rosie is immunocompromised, and even if she wasn't attending, Becca still put Rosie at risk by bringing her sick kids in contact with her siblings. Becca is known to call out people publicly for making bad apologies, but after spending time with Acacia and interacting with her, she said nothing. An opinion Twitter user messaged Becca asking her why she made an exception in Acacia's case. I'm not sure how much I can show, but to summarize, Becca said that she was not aware of Acacia's apology being copied word for word from a black follower of Acacia's who messaged her an example of what she should say in an apology. Becca says that doesn't matter because Acacia went on to apologize in a 5 minute YouTube video and that the way Acacia speaks online and in person shows her growth. She also says that when people bring this up to companies Acacia works with and they make a decision to stop working with her, they're putting Acacia in debt, not realizing companies are choosing to stop working with Acacia directly because of her own behavior and refusing to acknowledge any of it until the moment where she had no way of getting away with it anymore during the Black Lives Matter protests in June of 2020. And even then, she tried to address it in the most vague, secretive way possible first. When Acacia found out that Becca was talking about her to Opinion Twitter, their friendship quickly ended. And this video is coming to an end too. What do you think about Becca's past in the media and the things that she chooses to share? Is the concern for Becca's kids' safety based on what's posted valid, or is it mom shaming? Let me know your opinion in the comments. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next one.